One of Beulah's longer standing traditions is the annual art show. In the past, this was just an opportunity for local artists to set their work out for people to enjoy, and that was usually on the main road into town. They'd hang paintings on the fences and people could walk up and down the street and take a look at what was available. Over the years, it has evolved into a much bigger event and is now held over at the school and the school's track can be used as a parking area and a street in front of the school is where people set up booths. And it's really more of an arts and craft show now than it is an actual art show. But it does provide a place for artists and crafters to sell the things they've made. And it's important to have an outlet like that. And it really draws quite a crowd every summer and even has some vintage cars and hot rods that people bring out to show. And it's a pretty big event. <laughs> Since there aren't very many restaurants in Beulah, we always look forward to the food truck showing up so we get something a little bit different to eat for lunch. Today, that was a hamburger. We love your YouTube channel, John. We love your YouTube channel. Thanks. Yeah, we saw you walking by. Hi, Janet. Welcome by. My little, walking by. My little stealth camera here that's not really all I, that sneaky. Well, I had no idea. <laughs> and so far, this entire video has been done with the Insta360 One X2. That's a little 360 camera that can do some things a normal camera just can't do. Now what makes a 360 camera work is it has a 180 degree spherical lens on the front and on the back of the camera. So there's about a half inch of separation between those. Let me pull up my cell phone here. And we will use it to take a video of that camera. So you can see what this looks like. Now One X2 has this nice touch screen on it which is better than the One X. And you can actually see what you're doing and make better adjustments on it that way. But here's the, the lens there. And the lens there. And you can see that it just has this much space between them. And due to the magic of the software, it eliminates that space, bringing these together into a 360 image. So you can pan all the way around in a circle and most of the time you can't tell that it was stitched together there. Sometimes there's a little artifact or a little bit of a wobbly image, but for the most part, it can make a pretty cool video. But the other thing that does for you is when it's on a selfie stick, the selfie stick is in that same space and it gets edited out by that software. So it ends up being more or less invisible. So here you can see the, the selfie stick and this one's got a tripod on it so I can set it down, but I can fold that in. Use it as a handle. And now this is the image you get from that. You can see my hand out in the air, but you shouldn't be able to see much of the stick. You might see the handle in my hand. And the only problem with this is that people always have their hand out in the air, so you know they're holding on to something. But if you're careful with it, maybe you Hold your hand down here at your side so that it looks a little bit more natural. It can kind of disappear and it can give the impression that you've got a camera person following you around. This is also a great little camera if you want to catch something coming into the frame and then leaving on the other side. You don't have to stop, reposition the camera and take the shot twice. You can do it all in one take. And you can edit that to get it to look the way you want it to, either on the desktop software or on mobile software. I personally prefer the desktop software just because everything is bigger and I can use a keyboard instead of having to do everything with the tip of my finger. Now how's the audio on this little camera? Well, better than some little cameras, but not great. And all the audio in this video has been recorded on the Insta360 ONE X2. If you want the best audio possible, you really do need to record it separately on a little audio recorder or find a way to plug something into the camera which is an option, but it's a little bit of a process. Now to get the best audio from this, I've got the camera right now, just about a foot and a half away from my face. And because this is a wide angle lens, it should be an okay image. We'll see when we edit. Now this is a relatively short selfie stick. It's about three feet long. 
And if I hold it down here at my side, this is about the image you get. Of course, the audio is probably getting worse because I'm moving the camera further away. But what happens if we put a longer selfie stick on? I've got one that's 10 feet long, three meters to be more precise. That's just a carbon fiber stick. Make sure you don't get it near any power poles. It's electrically conductive. I also wouldn't use it out in the rain. So let's switch the camera over to this stick and see what we end up with. So you can see how if you're not real steady, it gets a little shaky and wobbly. Really what that means is that intentional smooth movements are better than using this just to walk around and do vlog style stuff with. So if you practice with this and you get good at using it, you can get shots that are very similar to drone shots if you don't need a drone often, this might be a good substitute. Plus, this does have audio, even if it's not the best audio in the world. And drones don't. Or I should say, most drones don't. So what do you say we go back in the house and edit some of this footage and see what it looks like? Let's take a look at the editing process using Insta360 Studio app to edit the footage. I'm not going to take a real in-depth look at this. I just want to kind of show an introduction of what you can do. There's a lot about this I haven't learned, and there are a lot of people that know way more about it that have done tutorials if you search YouTube. Okay, I'm going to start by opening the Insta360 software. And bring in the files that I want. You can set the aspect ratio of the footage to, to one by one if you're doing maybe Instagram posts or 9 by 16 if you're doing Reels or YouTube Shorts or TikToks, 16 by 9, 4 by 3 for something like Facebook. And then you just drag the footage around until you get what you want. And you can set a keyframe there. So as I walk through that scene, I set another keyframe and bring it back to center. And then if I go back and watch that whole thing, watch me bang my head on the carport there, then the camera follows me. And that's exactly what we want with this. But I also want to be in uh, 16 by 9, not 9 by 16. So I'll go back there. Now, I want to zoom in a little bit at this keyframe. Now, what I do is I just get the keyframing done here. I don't do any cuts for splicing one clip to the other. I do all that in DaVinci Resolve so that I can sync audio a little bit easier and get my clips if I'm using another camera to line up. And I just find that easier. You can do some of that in this software though. And let's not forget the tiny planet effect. It's a lot of fun, a little bit gimmicky, a little bit of a cliche, but if you own a 360 camera, you gotta do it every now and then. So here's the crystal ball effect that just gives you this round ball. And here's the tiny planet that's always so much fun. Then you can set another keyframe when you want that to end and go on a little bit further and another keyframe to go back to the regular editing so that whole sequence then looks sort of like this. Well, anyways, I don't really mean for this to be a tutorial on how to use this software. 
I don't use this enough to be really good at it. Now you don't mind putting up with some of the quirks and you're interested in buying your own Insta360-1X or any of the other Insta360 products, I've got some links down in the video description with all the camera gear. And that is an affiliate link. I get a little beer money if you use that link, but not much. Anyways, thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you for the next one.